between Marvel and DC. I have to say this. I say it out loud all the time. The Hulk lost the fist fight. Yeah. <laughs> can, can I just bring that up with the Hulk lost the fist fight with Thanos and then was scared to come out? Well, hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Average Superstar TV. I am your host, Lauren Lepery. Insert that sound effect. Boom. Please hit that subscribe button on YouTube, Spotify, Amazon, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. And this week, we are back in, I'd say, the world of cinema. I got a fellow guest here who runs his own podcast called The Movie Theater Time Machine. Yes, podcast. Uh, this guy definitely is a he's a scholar for film, especially the old. From we can go back as far as you want, all the way to black and white, to even silent films. But this guy, uh, this guy loves talking that up. Good. I'm certainly a person who could go all over around the room too, so we're just gonna have fun with this. But with that, Nick, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you, Lord. Thank you for having me, man. Absolutely. So. Briefly, before we start going into all our bullet points here, like tell us, give the audience a brief uh, rundown of what you do on your podcast. Yeah, man. Movie Theater Time Machine is the show where we keep it real to real. I don't let you figure out the spelling on that. Uh, we're four just nerdy people who just really love to have a lot of fun talking about movies because we want to be able to show good light and bring out some good in the world and really just explore and see how people think, tell funny stories and tangents in between and, you know, just have the best times. Sweet, sweet. That's awesome. So, I mean, going back as far as you can remember, were you just someone who, you know, I could also say myself, were you just always just drawing the movies? Like, was a lot yeah, of you? I definitely was. I mean, it was it was my grandmother who really got me into it, and um, we always went to this move, uh, this uh, rental place for years when I had to visit her. She was she grew up in this. She had a house in this little tiny town. Uh, but there was this little independent video store that we always went to. And she said, okay, pick out what you want. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but she always picked something out and it said, you know, okay, we're going to, I'm going to, we'll watch what you want, but then I'm going to show you something of mine as well. That was the agreement. I was like, okay, great. And ever since I could remember, we always like, it just it developed my love of that. That's awesome. So like we're, let me say, like, I'm a guy, I was a kid who always loved, I couldn't, I'm still like this now, even though I'm not in school, yeah. even in, and in the working world force here, but I was always about, do what you got to do, but I can't wait to get out of school to start playing, whether it was like playing That's wiffle ball in the yard, hide and go seek, or am I going to walk six blocks that way and just look for kids to attempt to play with? I was always like, go, 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 but when you did that and it didn't work that's when you sunk into movies oh yeah oh, and yeah. and you and, and i could literally there was times i mean i could do three movies in a row i i, I can tell you right now i can't do that with my attention span i'm literally right. a person that like <laughs> when someone tells me to watch a movie i have to look up the time because yeah. unless like there's bad weather i know uh i have a lot like like right. weather is going to prevent me if you i see did. over an hour and like 40 yeah. minutes, I'm like, ooh, you're going to have to wait yeah. for a snowstorm for that. So when someone tells me there's a movie <laughs> two and a half or three hours, uh, that might take me a decade to watch. Okay. I want my 90 minutes and and I'm reloaded oh, and, and go. No, so, I wholeheartedly agree with you. I mean, there was one movie we did, I remember years ago, we did the movie Gone with the Wind. Yes. Was in nearly four hours. And it felt like it. And I mean, I remember watching that and I got out of work and I worked until midnight and, she, and she's like, let's try to tackle some of it because we had to record the next day. And I got two hours in and I thought I'd been up all night. Gotcha. <laughs> like, I, just, I was like, oh my God. I'm like, I, I can't do this. We got to the intermission boy and I'm like, all right, I got to stop. Yeah. I got to stop it. I agree with you. The first thing that comes to mind is there There was a sketch on Saturday Night Live, which is like the pinnacle 
feeling of it was by a song by Pete Davidson called Short Ass Movie. And, you know, just looking at that and looking for it, looking for something like, you know, 100 minutes or less. Yeah. And it's there. It's 90 minutes. Great. I'm looking at it. I'm looking for Netflix for a short ass movie. And I agree with you when you see that because there's so much going on with our lives and things. Like my Kaz and I, um, you know, who created the show, we'll watch a movie. We'll watch it on a Thursday or Friday night. And then depending on what's going on, if it's two hours, we're like, ah, eh, okay, I think we'll kind of like try to stick it out. But then we chop it up. Yeah. Like, I would chop it up. But I mean, I'm with you, though, because I can remember a lot of it with rainy days going to Blockbuster and having stacks of VHS tapes. Yeah, it, 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 was, yeah. It, it was a big thing because yeah. I grew up outside of Scranton and... For a long, t- it took us a long time to get a blockbuster, but yeah. there was about twelve places to rent movies, and they were mom and pop shops. I love or, mom and, and pop shops, and, it was, and that was be- the beautiful way. But also, you could go to your Rite Aid and your mm-hmm. CVS, and and mm-hmm. actually, and they'd have about only a hundred and fifty movies to rent. But right. you could you could go anywhere and just kind of like. Look around. Yeah. So every time I yeah. went to the grocery stores with my parents, I was like, "You know where to find me. You could shop. I'm going to be at the magazine rack. Or right. I'm going to be over at the movies. And then it's always, can I? Will you buy me this magazine? No, put it back. Can we rent this movie? No. <laughs> but but I would read the I'd read the boxes. I remember I'd always bring up the Reanimator uh, movie to my parents. They'd be like, "No." And they'd be like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> strictly videos that was it yeah. just videos but it was there were stacks of them and i remember on rainy days you know she'd come home early or something or and we'd watch through several of them i still remember like the one movie we will never have on the show is dirty dancing mm-hmm. i think she she made me watch that from when i was five and six years old almost every day for both summers yeah you know, I'm like, I'm done with it. I understand why, like, why people would appeal to it. I understand the, you know, the popularity, but I don't want to hear that damn. But movie. you're a kid, so when yeah. Swayze Five did years that, old, you don't want to when, hear about that. Yeah. When Patrick Swayze did that movie, I was yeah. like, I, I'm sick of hearing how good looking he is. I'm right. doing a dance movie, like. Get, get out of here. I don't want nothing to do. I didn't even watch Roadhouse, which I completely love now, but like it's really a long time. I was done with that guy, but now that like I'm older, yeah, I really appreciate Dirty Dancing. It's just a nine year old boy is just not it's dancing. No, I'm nine. I don't want to watch a movie about dancing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah so. I don't want to do that either. I mean, it's just it, none, none of it appealed to me then. And I mean, it's funny when you think of it now, how much like some of the stuff doesn't hold up anymore without a doubt and there's a lot of movies that you didn't you watch when you were a kid and it might come on tv and you might not turn it off for two minutes and you oh. find it on and then at the end you're like wow that was a good movie it's just my taste changed yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Well, the one i could think of right away was when we saw like growing up i watched fast times at richmond high beautiful movie yeah great movie but I only saw it on cable. Okay. I only, and I saw that again. I could remember almost all of it. I had no idea there was a pregnancy abortion plot. Okay. Because you you weren't old enough to understand what was going on, right? No, all of it was cut out. Oh, they cut it all, all out. Wow. All of it was cut out. So I watched this later on and we're watching this whole thing. I'm like, that happened? You, you you know when you say something like that, like people say yeah. the fast times at Richmond High, that okay, how am I, I'm gonna try to word this right. Around the late seventies and early eighties, you know, they made like movies like Private Lessons and Hots and Porkies and anything that kind of do with like girls or bimbos and anyone could score with them and and frat house and this and that, yeah. Revenge of the Nerds, but. Some of those movies really had, like, that's what it was. Like, the yeah. guys are smart, the girls are stupid. And, like, yeah. you look at them now, you're like, kid. I, I remember watching some of them. I'm like, when I get older, I'm going to get every girl. I'm going right. to find every girl that's like this. I remember, and then you grow up, you're like, there is no girl like this. This, no. is, this, <laughs> this is a dumb, 
USA up all night movie, and you're just like, this doesn't exist. But there's a lot of movies. <laughs> there's a lot of movies though from there, like we said, Fast Times. Like Fast Times is like this was while kids really were. This really happened. The pregnancy yeah. and like no yeah. idea of like Damone actually agreed and really did want to bring her. But he couldn't get the money. He didn't know how to say no. Like, like, like I can't, you know, I can't help today. And then sticks her. You know, you, you could go get your abortion by yourself. Like, right. really, I don't think he wanted that. But, like, that's a big topic. Like, that was, right. like, a big, that's real life. And even when I say, like, when I was 11 years old, uh, when I was about to turn 11, there was a couple kids in the neighborhood. And, and they were like, you're 10, right? You're about to turn 11. They're like, you're going to be a man. They're like, we're going to let you watch something when you're 11 and like, you welcome to the club sort of thing. And they kept telling me about this for a month. So finally, when I turned 11, this group of kids, they, we, we, we lived by a Creek and uh, there was like a bunch of rocks and stuff that kind of held it up, like held up the walls. And they yeah. went in, they, they had a plastic bag and they pulled out a videotape and they're just like, you ready to become a man to go, this is, you, you're, you're old enough to watch this now. And I'm like, like I'm getting knighted. Like I'm just frozen. Yeah. It pulls out a VHS tape and it's taped from HBO, but it had all three Porky's movies on it. Right. And I'm, I've never seen a naked girl period yeah. at that time. Like no. Yeah. And they're telling me about, they're like, we're putting it back in. You could come get it and make sure you watch it as much as you want, but make sure you put it back for the rest of us. And I'm like, so we start walking. When we get a block away, I turned and I yelled, what? Coming. And I, I as if my mom was like yelling to me, even though no yeah, one's yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I got to go. And they're like, and they were stupid, stupid kids too. They're like, okay. I ran. I grabbed that tape. They never saw it the rest of their life. <laughs> <laughs> they never saw it the rest of their life. And, <laughs> and even then when it, when something like resonated with me with film mm -hmm. or where, I remember when I watched the movie, I just thought, like, I kept hearing there's going to be a shower scene. There's a shower scene. But right. I didn't realize Porky's was a very well-done movie. It had arcs with characters. Yeah. There was some darkness to it, like, particularly Tim's character, who has right. a basically a, a kind of like a Nazi father that told him, like, you know, taught him to be racist, taught him to, to not like Jewish people. And then he meets Brian Swartz, who was one was part of the team and like gives him a hard time, fights him, gets his ass kicked and then takes time and realizes like Brian's a good dude. Dad, you're the bad dude. Like and had to face him at the end of the movie. I'm like, this is like an actual movie movie. So certainly I rewound, especially when I first saw the shower scene a million times. Sure. But I started right. really like, wow, this is an actual, you know, like movie, movie with, of course, there's it's a comical and stuff, but the whole idea of what Porky does to these kids. Yeah. And, you know, of course, it's a little ridiculous how they destroy this entire place at the end, but it gets right. dark when Mickey's ego's hurt and he keeps going back and getting his, getting his butt kicked repeatedly. And even yeah. into the next day when Pee Wee wanted to have sex so bad and then Wendy gives it up for him, and then the next day, everybody's like, "Well, that's my girlfriend now." He doesn't want the rumors to be true. Like there's, there was so many arcs in some of those films that get overlooked when someone just says "Porkies," oh, naked, make it naked yeah. smut, and that's all it is. Like yeah. people, people need to keep that. People need to be able to open their eyes a little more. That they're, you know, some of this stuff is well written. Actually, I, I really think you're right, and also with others, it's kind of funny because. When you see movies like that, especially of that era, like one of them I watched so many times. I mean, I could practically memorize the script. I mean, it's getting on almost the anniversary of it, but it's uh, The Breakfast Club. Top, to me, one of the top five most important movies ever made. It's without a doubt the best teen movie ever made. I hit home with all of us. I totally, totally agree with you. I mean, it is one of those. My, my sister and I are 11 years apart. But it was one of those movies that it it um, it really um, bonded us. Yeah. Because you know, growing up, she looked like Molly Ringwald. 
you know, to like to a T. And I mean, growing up, I was Brian Johnson. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was Brian Johnson a hundred percent. And I mean, you know, again, you know, the my hair fell down to my chin and retired. But you know, the that movie, I mean, why it's so important is because it changes as you grow and you see other perspectives. Because with uh, Principal Vernon, like, you know, for example, even just seeing him alone as a, you know, as a teenager watching him and I'm watching, you know, John Bender and, you know, uh, you know Judd Nelson, you know, kind of just being a jerk about things and, you know, sticking it to the man. And I'm like, OK, he's causing a little bit of trouble for this jerk principal. And then, you know, when you look at it, you realize he comes from an abusive family. Yeah. And, you know, Molly Ringwald's character also has, you know, Claire has a lot of problems and everybody else is all I mean, kind of... Estevez, as he, his father was, in a way, a big jerk, too, pushing yeah. him. Like, yeah. But, like, yeah, I him. just wanted to. I mean, I, and I knew a kid that I grew up with who was, like, the, like, Mr. Wrestling in the town I grew up in and was expected to get a scholarship. And he was Andrew, like a- Andrew to a T, Amelia West of his character. And, you know, but his dad was pushing him like he actually hated wrestling. He hated wrestling. And even where like I, I would kid around with them, I'm like, I'm like, oh, good. You know, he's like, yeah, like, I got to go to practice, man. I got to go. I'm like, so you got to put on your tights. Yeah. No, I got to wear the required uniform. Uh, yeah. Tights. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, Times, yeah. you know, but then when you grow up and even where like even with Carl the janitor, where you look at it, I'm like, oh, I grew up and I'm like, okay, I'm kind of at the point where I am Richard Vernon's age. So I'm like, all right, I get it. I'm almost 40 years old. He's probably right around there, maybe a little older. I'm like, yeah, I can kind of see his point. He's just trying to run a school. Like he's a little bit paranoid, or he's like He's right at the border level of being a paranoid authority figure, but you got a jerk kid, and you don't take time to know what it what, where he's coming from. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. And then you got I, Carl the janitor, who's like, "Yeah, I'm kind of Carl the janitor now." Yeah, and I think probably the best line that cuts through me because it's mm-hmm. the freaking truth. Because when you were a kid, yeah, we were all way better to each other because you know, yeah, yeah the mom and dad. But Ali Shady, but says when you grow up, your heart dies. Like that's yeah. this, that's this that still paralyzes me. I'm never ready for that part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I because I mean because they got to have a dance scene because they got to have a scene where, uh, for me that always gets me is the scene where they're all smoking. Yeah, they're, they're oh, right. I, I can't relate to that because I've never done that in my life. But like I yeah. understand, I, I I understand that's what they did for to bond, start bonding the yeah. character and all that but but it's it really was, and it, it's really an important film and i'm sure you've touched on this a lot but in your podcast but we're to me we're getting away what what, what was amazing film from gone with the wind from the godfather from the exorcist right you, you know the breakfast at tiffany's where the acting in the story was just so it took you into a different world where when you get into the star Wars and Marvel stuff, it's like mm-hmm. I, for, for years, I wanted the comic book stuff to really break through. I thought it was a, they were underused. I, I, I thought the X-Men in 2000 was the sacrificial lamb because, be, because yeah. to me, when you said Marvel, it was Spider-Man and the X-Men. Yep. And the X the X Men had to wait. I guess you know the movie. It took some time for technology to catch up, but when that hit, I mean, I remember running out of the movie theater so happy. And then they yeah. bought up all the movie rights. But I don't know how the Avengers. To me, the X Men should have had that spot, but because they weren't run by an actual Marvel studio and it was 20th Century Fox, your 20th Century Fox to me was just like we have this property. But we got mm-hmm. these drama films, these comic comedy films, and you're bringing in people that just don't know how to maybe tell the story as much. I'm not saying Brian Singer did a bad job, but 
I mean, there's, I, prob there's problems. I just I think that what happens when you look at movies, I mean, movies are reflections of the time. Yeah. You know, like a comedian who tells good jokes, you know, a good comedian, a good friend of mine says a good comedian is a mirror. Where you look at it and, you know, they tell the jokes, they tell the stories, and they reflect what the audience is thinking right back to them, uh -huh. which makes it funny. But, you know, where you think about a movie, I think um, you go right back to Iron Man. And right at that time, I mean, it was Spider-Man that really caused the avalanche of the, of the, of the superhero movies to come along. If we didn't have 9-11, we wouldn't have had any of this. Yes. At all. We wouldn't have had because, like, we, you know, we had a world in, you know, at least in continental U.S., you know, we had never been touched by foreign enemies at all. We had never done that. And I was a senior in high school when 9-11 happened. So I'm, I'm thinking to myself and, you know, so growing up disabled, I'm like, okay, I can't get into the Army, but I'm going to, like, maybe, you know, go into business or I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do at that point, but I was like, oh, this will be a good thing for me. And, you know, then that all happened and you're looking around and I remember the feeling of, you know, I'm with my, you know, my girlfriend at the time, you know, who became my wife eventually, but we're there and we started dating uh, I think we were dating not even a year at that point. And she said, you know, if the, if the draft comes and gets you, we're going to hide you in a closet. And I said to myself, well, if the draft comes and gets me, there's no Steve Rogers. There's nothing, you know, there, I, I can't get into an Iron Man suit. There, I can't do, I can't be Thor. I can't do this. And then, you know, you see Spider-Man's coming out. Yeah. And, you know, what did Spider-Man have? All the American flags everywhere. Like, and it was based in New York, that city that was attacked. And we all yeah. looked at it like, okay, there's hope. And, you know, what the reflection of a good movie is, is that it reflects society at the time, kind of what society needs. A good one. Yeah. You know, a good movie. Now, a bad movie, like, going, getting back to your point, when you mentioned Gone with the Wind, Godfather, Star Wars, and all that, you think historically, um, for years, what it was, was you had the studio movie machine. Yeah. You know, they'd turn out stuff, and they'd turn out stuff, and it was just, you had somebody who showed up nine to five every day, and they wrote movies. You had somebody who showed up and acted, and it was, you know, whether it flopped or whether it was great, didn't really matter. You know, it didn't really matter. I mean, you know, the we call, we did a, a show about a year ago, we did a whole thing on uh, Casablanca. Casablanca, I call it the accidental part of the, was it the accidental classic? Okay. It was a movie that was not supposed to hit. It was not supposed to do well, um, you know, but the timing that it was released, the U.S. Navy and military were going through Morocco and ended up going through Casablanca to fight the Nazis. So, but, you know, all in the papers was all about Casablanca, and here's this movie, Casablanca. Yeah. You know, and then people were like, and then it was supposed to be out a little bit later, but then Humphrey Bogart said, you know, get on there, and his words exactly to the Warner, to Jack Warner was, you know, I think you got to get this picture out there. The people need this. You know, and, you know, the guy, what happened after that with the breakdown of the studio system and, the, <clears throat> and you know, and all the, you know, the, the actors and actresses who weren't contracted with studios any longer is you had the passion projects. You had the people who wanted to tell this story that, you know, just became that amazing thing, like. Star Wars, for you know, for example, which is George Lucas' life work, yes, that he had, and um, you know, The Godfather, which you know, Francis Ford Coppola, uh, yeah, was kicking that script around, and it came to him and said, "We have to do this." Yes, nobody really wanted a mafia movie at the time, but then when he read it and. You know, he I read think the world wanted to know how that ran because everybody exactly. knew exactly what the mo so this is another reason yeah. everybody's flocking to it. Like how how are how do these guys operate? Because yeah, where you where you had a bunch of kids uh people in the 90s up to now that love to say, mm -hmm. like, 
yo, you know who I'm connected to? Like, that's not what they wanted. We didn't exist because you don't want the feds down our down our throat. Where everybody exactly. like around these days is like, hey, you know who I know and all that. Like, no, yeah. that's not what they wanted. So it was like kind right. of yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it can it went down to like the Sopranos and stuff, you know, even where beautiful, um, beautiful one of the most beautiful shows ever made. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And you know, I story I, the acting especially, but the yeah. great storytelling. Yeah. Which to me is the biggest lack of what I don't like in television and movies anymore, particularly movies. I, I if I, I don't care what your story's about, but if I can't get behind the character, and when yeah. I leave the theater, if I find plot holes and be like, well, what was the whole point of that part? Or yeah. why did why are they talking about this and then nothing ever happened? Like I I, I it, it kills me because I feel I I feel movies today are being written by children that are unexperienced. I totally agree with you. And I think a lot of those were swinging back the pendulum to where, like what I call the boardroom movie. Yeah. Cause you see a lot of these are casted and a lot of movies that are put together now are, are put together. And it's almost like, okay, this is going to go on Hulu. Yeah. You know, so who the hell cares? What's going to be Hulu will buy it up. Because, or, or, you know, or Netflix or whatever, they'll buy up whatever movie it is. And regardless of whoever sees it, they already make their money anyway because they have the monthly subscriptions. Yes. You know, so they can, uh, it, it is, think, that, that's the, the, the feed to make sure that subscription keeps coming. Yeah. Okay, that's all it is content. We got to have stuff. Yeah, they, they don't really care what's yeah. there. You know, where's the fat best friend? And, of course, you're going to have it. What, what's really disheartening for me, especially in film and TV, is the checking of the boxes. And you yep. can literally call things. And, look, I, I, like, push back at the woke now because I'm angry about it. But I'm a punk rocker, and I've always thought different. I was there before everybody else. But that doesn't yep. mean Me every TV show and movie you have, when you're forcing it in there. I literally feel when I when, when I'm watching TV, someone walks behind me, and here's oh here's that character check. Yep. And, you know, it's the new TV, right? This is, you're and you're gonna conform. Yeah, it kills me because I'm. It's not that I'm against that. It's just that when you cram it in, it doesn't yeah. seem genuine. Right. It's no, gotta I, fit. I agree. You or, or it's like you know early days of Mortal Kombat. Let's move the screen a little bit. But if you had Mortal Kombat where you had the guy pop up in the middle, yeah, 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 side, just be like, you get it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, and, something would happen. And I would, you get it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, it, it's completely, it's completely wrecking me yeah. watching TV. And I'm literally down to I only watch Yellowstone right. because I don't have to. It's a one one. It's a freaking amazing show, but. Yeah. Anything else I've tried to watch, Susan, those boxes start getting checked, I'm out. So I'm kind of back to like, I'm watching reruns of Night Court and I'm in heaven because I haven't seen it in 20, 20 years or so. Yeah, so. You know, I started watching uh, the show Fringe. Okay, yeah. For but that exact reason. I'm like, I loved that show. I hadn't picked it up in forever. And just in conversation, I just happened to hear about a band they created in the show. And just you know, found the music on Spotify. I'm like, ooh, ooh, cool. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and just see what the bishops are doing and just you know try that again. But I mean, there's a bit of nostalgia, but also I think today, um, I think people are so heavy into nostalgia. And this right is, I, I, it's weird because it's I call this a double head, double head uh, edge sword with this. Mm -hmm. I can use Star Wars as an absolute perfect about this nostalgic stuff yeah. because I'm out of star Wars. I will not watch anything with star Wars to 2030. Yeah. I promise myself I can't because yeah. when star Wars came out, clearly it was groundbreaking. Right. Okay. You got like a star Wars bar. You never saw that before. You, right. you, you got, you got a walking Bigfoot in Chewbacca. You never saw that before. The, right. the whole idea with the force is, uh, droids. This is all new. So when that movie came out, which wasn't even marketed too well, people just were, were going to theater and coming out I'm like, wow. One would tell the other and tell the other, yeah. like, 
You yeah. got there's nothing like it. So yeah. even all three of those first films, and clearly you could we all love the second one, and then the last one was like what happened? It's like it's like it, like little bears are just defeated, just defeated the freaking empire. But like it was so important the the film it, yeah. it part of pop culture. But when you tried to go back, and I'm not a person that so much knocks the prequels at all because I, I kind of favor the prequels over seven, eight, nine any day of the week. But yeah. Yeah. but my point is, you can't recapture that moment. No, it, it, I, it's just it's because. Just because you have better technology now, and some yeah. will argue about that, but like you go into the prequels, you, you see how dated the first ones are, especially the 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 sword fights. I mean, good yeah. God, Luke versus Vader each time, like yeah, right. <laughs> compared yeah. to what they came up with in the prequels. Oh my God, amazing <laughs> fight yeah. choreography and yeah. all that. But I mean, even like I remember going in the geez, a. I forgot which one Samuel L. Jackson was in, but the fact that he All had a prequels. Yeah, he had he had a purple lightsaber. Yeah. You know, I saw that I was <clears> like, <throat> okay, that's a little different, but it was more of the same. And I mean, you're right. I mean, it's it is different because with the progression in technology, and I mean, it's different, but societal wise, it's different as well. And I mean, on my show, I interviewed Carl Gottlieb. Who uh, the guy who wrote Jaws? The perfect ten film. Yeah, per perfect ten. Great everything about it. But I mean, my father in law is one dude who he explained to me. He's like, he's like, when he saw it, he said that was the scariest movie of all time that he ever saw. My like, scariest moment in cinema history is Robert Shaw about to yeah. go into that mouth because I still jump because you're just like, yeah. You were yeah. in the water treading whatever many years yeah. ago, and you didn't you didn't get eaten up, and then you came a hunter, and now it's coming back to bite you. You should have gotten out and stayed out. You're like, oh my gosh, yeah, I oh mean, my gosh. Still, but I think it's like societal wise, like where you have, like you have jaws where it's like the majority of the movie, all you had was two notes. Yeah, you know, do, 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 yeah. Do, do. yeah. All you had was that, and then you had all the you know Quint, and you had all the other characters that just let you know it was the scariest thing was something you never saw. Anticipation, and, that's beautiful. Yeah, a swing the pendulum this way though is where you have Saul. You had that, and you had the first alien around yeah. that time. That it took forever to, for to reveal the alien. You know, actually, that's a really good comparison as well. Yeah. But you had saw it. I remember I took my wife out to see. I'm like, you got to see how cool this is. And she's she watched the first movie with me, and she's like, oh yeah, not bad, okay. And you know, it's just like, all right. And then the second movie where you see the killing in the first thirty seconds. Yeah. You know, brutal. There it is. Like here, here's where you are. She's like, whoa. And, you know, I remember sitting in the movie theater with her. And she's like, "What the hell are we like?" And she's she's got the hoodie like this. Yeah, you know, yeah. just looking at it, like, "How come I this ain't that bad?" And she, but then she grew up watching Jaws with her dad. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think the what with everything you got now with technology and other stuff, the storytelling. I'm thinking that we're going to swing backwards as well because the technology. I, sh I sure hope so. And yeah. I, I, the studios, I understand they they need content, so they just look at property and keep making sequels, prequels, mm -hmm. and beating it into the ground. But the, when you're rushing these things, yeah, you're you're killing what was what we loved. And look what happened after the prequels with all those people complaining and. I'm not really a person that complains about the pre. I like Jar Jar didn't destroy that franchise to me. I was like, I I could do without him, but nope. it didn't it didn't destroy it. It's just no. I think people didn't want that they, they were used so used to what they saw over here that they yeah. didn't they didn't like take the time to really care about this. And if they're gonna be like, oh Hayden Richardson's acting, I'm like, well, number one, you blame George Lucas for not giving a better direction, but. Was right. Mark Hamill a great actor? Was Carrie Fisher a great actor? I don't think so at all. They were the right ones in that role. They're right. Uh, to me, yeah. Harrison Ford carried that film. Yeah, he, he really yeah. did. And then, yeah. and then you go into the next one, the the, the seven, eight, nine. What'd you do? You just hit the re, 
the restart button. Yeah. Again, a droid happens to find the right person yeah. in the desert again. And yeah. then there's another wise ass, a Poe, that's just, oh, you're just the new Han Solo. Like, yeah. I got, it, 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 and then Dark Pussy, like, like I was like, oh, they got a cool bad guy. And then so he takes the mask. I don't know if I'm good or bad. I'm like, we just did this for six films. Yeah, we just, we just we, did this for yeah. six films, and you brought that yeah. back. I was so out. I was yeah. like, yeah. And the thing with movies for me, I had a question for you with that. Like, what do you think about what the uh, what Disney's doing, where they're trying to hit the they're trying to hit the nostalgia button and re-releasing a lot of movies or re-releasing live action versions. Uh, I, I, Disney to me, I, I I've been out of them like a long time. Uh, I have to. Yeah. Uh, I, I I'm just out. I I get mad at they they own everything from the Muppets to Sesame yep. Street. It's just they, I and get it. They, they, they forgot they owned. They forgot they owned, and you know yeah. they're like pushing the woke culture. But yet Walt Disney wasn't exactly a a no. nice man. We'll just leave it at that. No, he was not. Yeah. No. So if you want, they want to say cancel, they should all cancel themselves. Like. You know, so it's it. I am so more about because I'm an independent actor and filmmaker and podcaster mm-hmm. and ran my own. I'm more about what are you doing? You know, what what are my friends that are are, are watching us? What are you doing? I'd rather watch your stuff any day of the week because I think you the know, writers and the produce. I think there's too many cooks in the kitchen. And and I believe that's why I don't destroy the DC universe the way everybody else does, but there are certainly problems. But I understand when Zack Snyder's making Justice League and then the Warner Brothers guys come in and say, make sure this is in there, make sure yeah. that's in there. And Zack's like, I have a story that's written. That yeah. that's there. And when you tell me to do this, this is going to make no sense. And then sooner or later they get them out and then you come out with that Justice League film, which was – Terrible, terrible. But I, yeah. I, I just passed it because. But, but it, it, you're just sitting there at the end. I'm like, that should have been a million times better. And when he got the release, the Snyder's cut, I, I was in heaven with that. I, I <laughs> loved every bit of, of yeah. the Snyder's cut. I yeah. want, I want, I want them to keep going. I want that that Snyder universe to keep. Which I think Netflix may have bought it. I've been hearing. I haven't heard myself. I've been hearing that Netflix yeah. bought, bought the Snyder universe and yeah. they're going to continue. And I hope that last 15 minutes we saw in uh, Zack Snyder's universe where everything was all crazy and dark, I hope they pick up right there. Yeah. Like Batman and the Joker and uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, it's it's, crazy as hell. I agree, I agree with you. It's yeah. Just, I think they need to go dark. Yeah. I just yeah, think. I, I agree with and you. It's and it's a side story. It's yeah. not like the other way over here. You could have Superman. Yeah, yeah. Let them do what they were doing previously. But this is just an alternate universe. And I want to see what happens. To sum up all those 25 Marvel movies. It's yeah. I, I hate saying it this way because everybody yeah. can get back. But it's the same. It's the same as, as this. Yep. I've got same superpowers. Story. Yeah. This guy over here has the same superpowers. He's bad. Yeah. He I, tries to beat him up. The bad guy wins, and then yeah. someone says, "Hey, there's another good guy over there. You should talk to him and team up and beat him." And yeah. they do. They roll yeah. credits, and then you see a super bad guy goes, "What did he do? Oh, he yeah. beat him up. I'll see you next film." And that's yeah. it. And they're that's- trying to create the the comic book thing of like when I was a kid, and you go to the comic book store, you get that issue for the month or the week or whatever, and you gotta wait to see what happens next week. But I mean, I I'm I burned out on Marvel a lot, and I think what you're gonna do. I think you said something that really struck me. I think the studios need the people more than the people need the studios. And with you do all this, even like what we're doing right now, the technology has been has exponentially grown and has been democratized so much. Uh huh. That I think we like, I don't think they need it, but I think more independent stuff, or at least what feels more independent, is going to be the big, the big draws for a while. Yeah, you know, like even even the last uh, the last Joker movie, which I loved. I oh my god, I I I loved everything about that, and I mean, I was I was invited onto a show to review Wakanda Forever. 
didn't say, yeah, I'm not going to see that either. Yeah. It's, just, it's just I'm off the Marvel. Like, it's going to no, be fun. I, I, I realized, I mean, it was a part of the universe, but I mean, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll go see a movie anytime. I don't really, yeah. I don't really mind that. But I mean, that one was a, was it was constructed on the back that they lost their main actor. And yeah. it was attributed, it was their story of saying goodbye to Chadwick Boseman. And I mean, you know, and if you strip away tragic. all the Marvel yeah. stuff. Yeah. All it is is just these people saying goodbye to that character. So that's where, that's where a movie I would say, like for me, yeah. Overall, I like movies like American Honey or Magnolia mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. are real, real people. And you know what? I just said Magnolia, which is yeah. like a three-hour and fifteen-minute movie. Yeah, I, I, I have full, like it though. I have full attention for that. Yeah, where a lot of people agree with me there's a lot of people like well there's no real action like it's not supposed to be no. it, 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 you're supposed to be following these eight characters or so and yeah. these the, these stories that in and character art and i always said when people knock tom cruise i'm like tom cruise did one of the best performances i've ever seen on a film with another actor that didn't have to say a word back to him his dying father that's asleep at the end of the yeah. movie yeah like that's a beautiful film moment Oh yeah. my gosh! It's so yeah. I mean, he the kid melting down on stage live on that. What do kids know? You're. It's like yeah. they peed yeah. himself because, like, the father again is pushing him too much. Like he's yeah, yeah. You know, the win, yeah. I mean, win, he doesn't have a chance to be a kid. Yeah, I mean, Tom Cruise has got some craziness to him, but I mean, I think he's one all of actors them. do. None of them like all I, of I, them I do. I yes, but I don't I mean, believe that Robert Downey Jr. is like any worse than Tom Cruise. Like I just. Well, I, People just say like, oh, any of them that are jumping up and down saying political this, political that. It's like, mm -hmm. you don't even go there. You just read the news and pass it off that that that, that it's your own. It's that, mm -hmm. That's why I love uh, Team America so much. I love that line. They go with this the the, the the Screen Actors Guild. I don't know if they were call what they were calling themselves the Film it. Actors Guild. Film Actors Guild. But they go, well, we'll just watch the news and pass it off like it's our own information. Like, you yeah. know, <laughs> when they go, when the puppets come down, like, like Alec Baldwin, yeah, Sarandon, <laughs> Matt Damon, like, yeah, always gets me. <laughs> I'm still that that's top that's, five best comedy. Those guys movies. are genius. Top top five best comedy movies ever made, oh, ever man. ever made, and and I wish they'd make a sequel and and go after more of the uh, film actors guild. I hope they keep. Oh, I'm not going to tell you something here, but you definitely already know. But like movie mm -hmm. theaters, depending where you live, yep. they've been going away because yeah, you know. And I I I could actually tell you that I don't want the movie theaters to go away. However. I find myself not supporting them the last particularly five years because every time I'm watching a movie, I'm seeing this and 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 kids giggling and yeah. no, everybody's just rude in the theater and right. stuff, the movie theater experience to me has been, you know, it's got it's got flaws to me and I don't yeah. like also when I get there and it says movie starts at one fifty and I see an army commercial and a Coca Cola commercial and here's seven trailers at a point it's 235 and i'm like what wait, yeah what am i about yeah. to watch here? i don't even want to watch it now i'm burnt yeah. out we did that recently it was the 80th anniversary of casablanca uh-huh and they were they released it one day only in a local theater i'm like i gotta go yeah i have to see this in the theater and i mean there was maybe 15 people total yeah but they were there for that reason. Like yeah. everybody was the film geek, the film buff. And I heard, you know, some I I heard it and I, I, I might have been daydreaming it a bit, but somebody somebody played our podcast and I because I heard our intro jingle. Okay. And I'm like, wait a minute. You know, like, okay, somebody like somebody's here. I'm like, should I say something? Yeah. And I'm like, hello and <laughs> welcome to Casablanca. Yeah. Or something about that just to freak him out a bit, but yeah, you know, but then again, I'm like, maybe that may have happened, but I think you know what you're gonna see with the theaters is more like um 
you're not going to see like what would they have, you know, where when we were growing up, you know, with the, you know, the nine, ten, you know, theaters down, you know, that are constantly filled. I think what you're going to see is more of the special events, or I you're going to see something right. that comes along. Um, you know, maybe more seasonal, more like the drive-ins again. Drive-ins um, is where I live, and I. I yeah. I don't know what area you're at, but like I go to Mahoney drive in, which is like the best thing in America because they yeah. screen on 35 millimeter only. So yeah. It, it's, we have, yeah, we have one that's same. We have one in Smithfield, Rhode Island, which is about 15, 20 miles West of me. Okay. You know, I'm in Massachusetts and fall river, but, um, they, um, they play those same thing, 35 millimeter. And it was just, we pay, you know, you pay to have your car in the space, bring your own food. Yeah, car. We, you know, our bathroom may be working. <laughs> I, I like that. But you should <laughs> definitely, dude, you should take a look at the Mahoney drive in. I'll send you a link after. But they, yeah, they do, they, they do curious, like, yeah. they'll do like, yeah, children of the corn and bring half the cast out for that. That's, and that's what you're going to see because, like, we yeah, have, it, it, it may yeah. be like, the yeah. the next movie because there's always two like yeah. something those other actors were in like maybe Courtney Gaines because was in the, the Burbs will be after that because Courtney Gaines was also in you know right. that or uh, John yeah. Philbin was also in Killing a Corn but he was in Point Break so you might do that so they do dub they they do double feature I know they're about to so, open yeah, so does one from yeah. now yeah. and they yeah. always open with the Wizard of Oz and uh, Willy Wonka it's like tradition so, the people, last part of this interview uh, definitely want to go into is. Sure. I don't know how big you are with inconsistency in films with plots. I told you the acting and the story has to flow. And so, like, I'll I'll do a a knock on both sides of the uh, uh, of the two big companies that have been going on the last twenty years and kind of holding down film. But when Zack Snyder got a hold of to, to do the whole mm -hmm. Superman, I love Man of Steel. Yep. I really love how that's told. I love the whole idea with Terrell. I think people that came out of gate hating, I'm like, I think you just wanted to hate it before it came out, but I love that. Yep. However, at the end of the movie, I'm sitting there, I'm like, an entire city got destroyed in a movie where that should never happen. Right. Like Max Landis brought it up, and I told everybody, it's like a Superman's supposed to save the day, he's not supposed to save four people. Right. And like at the end, after thousands of people died, I was just like, "That's weird." Like people at the end were like, "Well, he Superman doesn't kill people." I was like, "He killed General Zod in Part Two in 1982. He he, he drained his power and threw him." I was like, "What? Because I what, what, he didn't break his neck?" Like like I'm like yeah. I don't I didn't even care about that. But but he also wasn't responsible for Zod. He he was protecting Earth. Zod's not human. He's no. not part of the human race. He's Kryptonian. No. So I could see him doing that in seconds if, if, if he needed. So I'm like, at the end, I'm walking out of the theater. I'm like, that was awesome. It's a good rebound. I like I like Henry. I really do like that dude playing Superman. I liked Lois Lane. I, thought, yeah. I, 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 loved, I loved every character. But I just remember saying, like, the city shouldn't be destroyed. That's yeah. bad. And then, like, when you get to the Marvel, the Infinity War is one of my favorite favorite comic book movies ever mm -hmm. it's done without and I, we know why because they have the rights but it's done without wolverine professor x magneto silver right. surfer who was extremely important to that story he was they moved, they moved on and at the end i'm thinking it was like you did this beautiful ending where they all died i know it's like saying well, they all died that's beautiful but it was it's what made yeah. the movie and right. I knew because I, knew I had the comic books what's going to happen in Infinity War, yeah. but you outdid that. And then in the end, as in Infinity War, Thor puts the 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 the, the, the axe into Thanos' chest, and he says, oh, I have the reality ring. Hold on. So at the end, why didn't Robert Downey Jr. do the same exact thing when he was done? Right. I, I thought that was inconsistent and the biggest error in all the comic books on both sides between Marvel and DC, I have to say this. I say it out loud all the time. The Hulk lost the fist fight. Yeah. <laughs> can, can I just bring that up with the Hulk lost the fist fight with Thanos and then was scared to come out? 
I, they I would have gotten rid of the Hulk. Yeah. I would have figured out, like, throw him to another planet. Like, he didn't get there in time. I understand you want the yeah. character. But I, I was so, like, it did. Or everyone was like, oh, man, Hulk got knocked out. And I'm like, he can't get knocked out. Yeah. That's the whole purpose of the Hulk. As you hit him, he keeps getting angrier. You right. can't stop him. Anger, so, he yeah. lost a fist fight. Yeah. <laughs> I... I can't, I can't disagree with you there. I mean, for me, with inconsistencies, I think there's always going to be something that is inconsistent, or somebody's going to like point it out to it. I mean, maybe it's maybe it's years of critiquing movies, and I mean, and the I don't even know how many I've done on the internet. You know, not only my own show, but various other shows as well. Um, I think. I think if they try their best and it's genuinely entertaining, I can overlook some of those. Not as big as that. Like you make a good point. If it goes against the character, hundred yeah, percent, that's all it is. Yeah. Like, yeah. If it goes against, like okay, you could have I, left him in outer space and he just didn't yeah. get there in time. You know, yeah. what if the Hulk landed as the Hulk in the fight right. after the snap and like yeah. was looking for people to beat up and he couldn't and he yeah. didn't drop to his knees and he screams like that would have been cool. Yeah. Like, what if the Hulk yeah. made it on time, you know? Yeah, but- I, I agree. I think the, I think they burned out. And, I mean, you know, there's so many damn movies. I think we're at the fifth in card, the fifth uh, installment of the Marvel or whatever the hell it is. I, I do it. I've been out. Like, what, what, what yeah. after Endgame is really where I ended. And, and yeah, I mean, know. there's some good, but I, I don't really like, I look at it, I'm like, okay, I'm kind of done, but that's what drew me back to classic and passion projects. It, there's always a positive. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, it's driving me back to watching old TV shows. Like, yeah. like, like well, after I get done with Night Horror, I'm going to watch the entire Laverne and Shirley over again because I just love that classic yeah. stuff. Yeah. You should. I grew up watching that. And yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's my childhood. Cool. Yeah. Nick, this is what. Really, one awesome show. I, I was really happy we uh, this. I thought we flowed good. Yeah, uh, same here, Lauren. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Nick, the floor is yours. Anything you want to plug for the, your your page? Anything yes. So, to... I mean, if you enjoyed this, you definitely enjoy my show. Hopefully, I mean, it's our show. Sorry, um, but you know, Movie Theater Time Machine comes out every Sunday. Um, you know, check us out. Uh, you can go to our website, very easy, movietheatertimemachine.com, um, where you can check out our shows on and every podcast format. There's a link there. Uh, you can see wherever. You can also go to our YouTube page as well, where you can see the uh, full, un, you know, uninterrupted interview with us and Brad Jones, the cinema snob who was more than generous with his time. Um, to be able to, and others. I also, next, uh, very soon, um, we have an interview with Larry Hankin coming out. So uh, do we, I. But it's, uh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So we both do. Definitely. And still here. I got his book, That Guy. That right guy. Here. Yeah. Yeah. And he's uh, quite uh, animated, people. He, he's yeah. definitely not a boring interview. He's a. No, he, no. I, I, I tell him, and it was our mutual friend Steve who said it, yeah. interviewing him is like interviewing a lawnmower. All you got to do is pull the cord, yep. and he goes. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, we, Kaz and I interviewed him, and we spent most of the time just laughing hysterically. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. 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 Oh, it's, it's good. Good, good. Yeah, so check that all out again. MovieTheaterTimeMachine.com. All the links. You can see everything on our show. So. Awesome. Love the, love the name of it and everything. So yeah. at this time, I will thank uh, the Average Superstar TV audience for taking the time to check the show out again. Yeah. Boom. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube, Spotify, Amazon, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. As I say every week when I close out my show, I say the party is over. Mm-hmm.